Bad electrician. We did not lose the Korean War. Bye. Unsubscribe podcast. Can explain to me how America lost the Korean War? Because like it's a common saying in the I American education. I don't think education. that the America that lost you the don't Korean think War. That? It was it's a good thing in the long run. You're not a moron thank you but the general <laughs> consensus is america hasn't won a war since world war ii america fought in korea what was our goal going into korea first of all it wasn't america action by itself it was united nations action yeah. including yeah. 17 other countries besides america what was the We're goal the police of the it world. was preventing north korea from taking over south korea Which yeah. we did. guess what we have today South, South Korea. Korea. <laughs> that sounds they like a fucking Samsung. success to me. <laughs> they got Samsung. So, next to the my Japanese dishwasher second... plays a 35 second long song every time the dishes are clean okay. because <laughs> we fought in the Korean so War. So if America <laughs> entered the Korean War under the fucking Fit. pretense of we're trying to save South Korea and South Korea exists today, how the fuck is that a loss? Explain that to me. That I makes mean, zero when, he's, when you think about it, actually, if that was the goal... Because, right, my, myself, my education, right, I'm thinking, I'm like, yeah, generally it is, when I hear about it, the Korean War was seen as a loss. If that was the goal, I mean, yeah, I know, what is it, Vietnam, a lot of people didn't like Vietnam vets because they viewed it as a conflict, what was it, it's public sentiment among civilians was it was a conflict we shouldn't have been involved in. I'm not saying that I'm not, I'm not parroting that sentiment. I'm saying that, like, as far as I've heard reasoning wise, why people didn't like Vietnam is because public sentiment was very, like, against it at that point in time. I don't know enough about the Korean War to really say one way or the other. I don't think it's going to be public sentiment, but it, it could very well be as well. I, I don't know enough about the situation. Zero fucking sense. No, no, no then, I agree. And then people say, oh, well, America lost Vietnam. Interesting. Media influence, it's, too, yeah. Give me. Let me ask you this, seriously, like legitimately, as somebody whose opinion that I value because I legitimately think that you're an intelligent person, he what is, is <laughs> what is the criteria that you can point to to say whether a war is won or lost? Objective achieved, question mark? Is, go ahead. No, you... Oh, I was just going to ask, like, is it is it the amount of people, like, is it whoever kills the most of the other side? Is it whoever, like, what is the criteria where you can point to it and be like, this is the line where you determine winner and loser as far as war goes. No, it's the it's the long term. It's uh. the long term uh, benefits of both the victor and the loser. Okay. So, for example, no, no, go ahead. For example, Iraq, not a good example. Japan, no, very good example. No, no, not right now. But it, the it, it that'll be but that'll be a factor. It's it's like Japan and Germany. Mm -hmm. Are recovering. extremely recovered, healthy, great countries mm -hmm. uh, and allies of our, allies so, of ours. Uh, okay, okay, so I'll, I'll, did I miss I'll, the question? A little bit. I, I like your answer, but it's it's deeper than I wanted oh, it to I be. Love this. If you're this looking, is... if you're looking at <laughs> war like it's a boxing Absolutely. match. I, I love these conversations when you get people that are actually intelligent in the same room. I mean, it's it's. Excellent, because the wording of the question really does matter, and these these are these not arguments. These discussions go back and forth all day. Like these are the conversations I love that are so few and far between anymore. Yeah, right and at the end of the day, you have to call a winner and a loser when the war okay. ends. What is the criteria? You're referring to Vietnam, sure, or any war. Like what is it? Like how did we decide who won World War II in Germany? Sure. They quit. Okay. They surrendered. Yeah. How did we decide who won World War II as far as the Pacific Theater? They, they surrendered. They surrendered. Yeah. Okay, so they were forced to sign a peace treaty right. that was not beneficial there's to them a overall. But there's a level of... The, the Japanese had a, a level of... Um, I don't want to use the word civility, but they were on the same page as the rest of the world when it comes to that's how we operate. Well, okay. they were as so they were, they were forced to sign a document yeah. stating... Oh, okay, we were wrong. This is yeah. how we're going to operate. And by now. the way, they've okay. held up to it. So, and, and they have, and that's great. And yeah. Japanese is a tremendous fucking ally. Shout out to, to this our day. fucking and they've JP like the whole world that we're in today, and I love it. But here's my Anime question: Anime for life. In Shohei Otani, <laughs> the best ball player in the world. I've already addressed the Korean War. <laughs> And how South Korea exists. So I'm going to go ahead and call America and the UN in general the victor in the Korean War. The correct okay. choice. Okay. 
Yep. Here's my issue with Vietnam. I agree with that. In, okay, thank you. High five. Okay, <laughs> here's my issue with Vietnam. In 1972, America launched Operation Linebacker 2. The 13 days before Christmas in 1972, America sent B-52s all day, every day to bomb the North Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They had a 36-hour ceasefire over Christmas. Mm -hmm. After that, they sent a transmission to the North Vietnamese and said, are you fuckers ready to quit yet? Mm -hmm. They said no. The next day, America sent 60 B-52s all at the same time to the North Vietnamese. That's called a Hail Vietnam Mary right there, yeah. And bomb the shit out of the them. The Hail Mary. By the time that 60th B-52 had dropped its payload and returned back to base, they'd received a transmission from the North Vietnamese that they were willing to enter peace talks. Okay. They then went to Paris and agreed and signed yeah. the Paris Accords, which was a peace treaty that did not benefit them. Mm -hmm. That peace treaty said that they were going to leave Laos, they were going to leave Cambodia, and that North and South Vietnam would reach a peaceful, amicable solution amongst themselves without American influence. And then America left because that was part of the peace treaty. That was in mm -hmm. 1972 slash January of 1973. 1975, North Vietnam invaded the South Vietnamese capital. Which we flew and out beat of South Vietnamese mm -hmm. after America had been gone for almost three fucking years. Americans were there when that happened. They had to fucking evacuate Saigon it, but, and everything but, like but that. But was it how we treated Afghanistan? Ish. Yeah, Americans were still there though. Yeah. In 1975, they had to evacuate Saigon. Yes, just like we evacuated Afghanistan. So that's what now I because you, Jack, I'm in your position where I have no fucking clue on this shit. Now I'm actually like, wait, but here's my that issue. In like, place. That's you, the one thing. You I'm forced like, the enemy to sign an amicable peace treaty that did not benefit them, mm -hmm. and then you're still going to be like, well, America fucking lost. Fuck you guys. That's I. I don't. I guess where does that sentiment come from? Like, what's it rooted in? Right. Like it almost feels like you're trying to find a reason to find fault and to. Kind of enter confirmation bias, right? Does that sound right? Make sense? Possibly, because like I understand, like from the public sentiment side of things, it seems like the American public was very anti-war. And I mean, think of this was the seventies. So I mean, the first thing that jumps to mind is going to be the hippie movement, right? Hippie craze, right? Anti-war, love everybody, apparently three knocks on a door, that kind of thing. Maybe that was 60s, actually, now I think about it. I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to uh, uh, patch up my timeline again. Like, yeah, in Vietnam, from what I understand, was just an absolute just mess. And the way I understand it, people got treated very, very badly who were in the service in Vietnam because of public perception on that, which is not really fair. That's not fair at all. You're told to go do a job, you do a job, and you come home and everyone just thinks it's okay to just, you know, shit on you. Like, that's that's not fair. So, I mean, it's it's, just, it, it's this is going on about the same time that, yeah, no, like, you mentioned Cambodia and stuff. Like, the, this, the, yeah, that was a really hectic time over there. And I guess, like, on the subject of loss, like, I get what he's saying in regards to the long-term effects that happen to both the winner and the loser, right? Like, the long-term effects of, say, World War II Germany, right? After the fall of the, the Third Reich, right? You know, we had the, the whole Fat Electrician Aldi's video, and we were, we were able to piece together that after the uh, Germany lost, the Axis lost in World War II, I mean, Germany was having it rebuilt, Germany got partitioned, Berlin Wall's a thing, right? And generally pretty bleak outlook, especially for the eastern side, right? East Berlin specifically, just rough. And... You look at something like the U.S., you look at, you know, the allied powers and stuff, and you're able to see, you know, I would argue growth. I would argue trying to uh, uh, achieve more for their people, more for the, the population, right? And I think that there's more of a positive, like a net positive profit gross, if you will, on the allies than there was the access. So I would argue that I think that would determine the victor. But this is also coming from somebody who is, you know, I'm not West Point trained. I'm not military. I'm a civilian that just likes to have intelligent conversations a lot. A win, though. But is it a lot? That's actually... That's my issue. That's a good question. I it's don't see Vietnam as a win. 
No, but what he's asking, hey, we forced the I'm, enemy I'm not to saying, do this. But like, if you're viewing it through the lens of like a boxing match and you have to call a winner at the end of the day, yeah. one side forced the other side to form a, force a, sign a peace treaty that did not benefit them. So mm -hmm. here, I'll, I'll break it down like and this. And then three years later, no. shit went sideways. Imagine this. Here, boxing match is the best way to do this. You go into a boxing match. Round six happens, and the the uh, the opponent, he signs the thing. He's like, you win. So if I can KO victory, boom. Three years later, that dude comes, shows up, and you're like, hey, man, I haven't seen you in a long time. He punches you in the face yeah. and knocks you out. Yeah. Is that victory on him, or is it on the original agreement? But the One's a sanctioned boxing match, Eli, and the other is a sucker punch. Well, he does bring up a good point, though. I don't think that's necessarily the best way... I, I like I like the way he frames it. I like what he's trying to get across. I also understand the counterpoint that one is a sanctioned match, so technically the victor of the sanctioned match would still be the initial victor. And if the dude comes out of nowhere and sucker punches you, I mean, sure, you can take that as a loss, right? But it is its own conflict, right? If we're saying like uh, card game terminology, right? Game one, game two, game three, right? Game one, you knock your opponent out. Cool. Go to game two, right? I mean, they win game two. You're then you go to game three, right? You know, uh, best of three being uh, uh, how games work generally, right? Or taking an online lobby, right? Say you are on one team, your buddy's on the other team in Call of Duty, right? And you play one game on Rust, right? Cool. You knock each other out. You do. You have. You, you win game one, right? And you play another game on Rust. So this is game two on Rust, and your buddy beats you, right? I mean, you still won the first game. He won the second game. What Fat Electrician is, I think, trying to get across is who wins the match, right? So if you have a best two out of three, who wins the two out of three, right? If you won game one, your buddy wins game two. Okay, but who overall wins? I think that's where the conversation needs to be steered. You, you mean war? Things. You mean war? Because we have a Geneva But that's convention. my overall... That's my point. <laughs> we have a Geneva <laughs> Geneva <laughs> gave a fuck. The but NBA that's, gave a fuck. But <laughs> that's that's what we do. Did you I see pitch. what... Did I you see what they did to me? Friends? That's my <laughs> overall issue, though, with history after the European theater of World War II, because every fucking historian that gets to decide what history is in fucking American textbooks and in textbooks in the world gets to view it. Guess who was the college students becoming historians I, during he, Vietnam? He, he, honestly, All the people that didn't go and fight I, I, the war. No, but I'm going to tell you something this. I don't give a fuck who won or okay. lost Vietnam. That's inconsequential to me. Yep. Uh -huh. it, to me, more of the problem is like, why did we enter? And that's the problem there. The okay. Gulf of Tonkin stuff and all that. I So here's my, po here's my point with that. I kind of like his approach to this, though. It's not so much the outcome. It's the root cause of this. And how do we fix it? I like where his head's at. I love that, that that's where he is. That is his headspace. Oh my God, I hate that I don't I know don't, why we started the I don't the care war. about the context. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. Don't get me wrong. I do to an extent. I, I don't give but, a fuck about the winner. Yeah, it's like, should it have happened <laughs> in the first place? That's, that's not true, though. No, I want to get to the you, root. If me and the you, American okay, government. If, you're, if you're a principal at a school, Okay. And uh -huh. two kids. That'd get, be terrible. And two kids get in a fist fight. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. one kid beats the fucking shit out of the other what kid. What color America. are America? Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> one kid beats the fucking shit out of the other kid, right? Yeah. Um, he wasn't the gay, right? Time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but Why did you shred? If one kid gets his ass beat, Vietnam. and then the other kid is like, I got my ass beat, and then you're like, well, the fight should have never took place, so nobody's the winner. No, that doesn't no, make no, sense. No, 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 no. Nick, you're looking at, uh, like, oh, fucking, sorry. Go fucking fat no, 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 Eli. As someone who ran <laughs> child fighting rings for years, <laughs> I'll give it a <laughs> <laughs> got the qualifications. <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> okay, Eli, go ahead. I just had to flex my resume. <laughs> I've been playing for fucking years. I never saw you one time at the child fighting ring. God damn. Okay, go ahead. That's how it's still in business. <laughs> I'm like, this is like a fight with your spouse. And you're like, no, no, it doesn't matter how the fight started. How did it end? You fucking lost, bitch. I was right. Those kids should have been no, at No, I want to hear what he said. God damn it. Go ahead, please. Is your beer? What's the deal with Go ahead. Beers? You have it. Is there more beer? Can I have more we beer? We have so many more beers. Always more beer. Go ahead, please. It's not White Claws. It's confusing me. Go. No, this is... Oh, it's so good because now you guys are on a point where you're like, who is here's, the winner? How does it start? I, I, so, like, I want to, I want to highlight like why I, why I have this opinion. And, and it's not because I'm just like so much fucking fucking gun ho. America's right. All the I don't time. think you're that kind I'm, of person. I'm yeah. happy yeah. to admit that America should not have been there. My uh -huh. issue is okay, that yeah. during cool. the Vietnam War, Thank during the C Korean War, you have an entire generation of young men that went off to fight a war, and they don't necessarily know why they were fighting it or why they ended up there or and they they also probably don't know what the actual results were because they didn't have the internet with wikipedia and right. they could just fucking google what actually right. fucking happened yeah they just got sent somewhere and they were like fucking this is a bad guy don't die yeah fucking good luck right and they got sent there they did the best they fucking could and then in korea and vietnam they got to come home and all the fucking historians that didn't go fight, they stayed right. and they went to college. And those guys came home and they're like, hey, you fucking lost. And I completely disagree. As on, on the surface level. You don't think there's a substantial amount of Vietnam veterans that have come to that same uh, admission? I absolutely is there? think there is a huge amount of Vietnam veterans that have come to grips and accepted the fact we that they it lost, was a lost cause. the Vietnam War. Yeah. Here's my issue. I wouldn't even say it sounds like the, the the crux of the issue is that the people that did not serve got to effectively shitpost the people that did serve and got to serve the narrative. I think that that's what he's trying to get across, potentially. And like, I can see how that would be seen as disingenuous. Absolutely. They lost. It was a lost cause. I ask, it's like for, the, for a period of time, war. I asked every Vietnam veteran that I got to talk to if they thought they won or lost. And almost all of them said they thought they lost. Uh -huh. And one of them said, when it comes to war, nobody wins. That was the, the one. And, and the only people that care to argue about it are the people that never fought. That's well, yeah, guy, for the actually, longest time, a smart guy. He did it war. made me. That man, straight up, just like wisdom 10, like straight up. Dude is on a next level. Quit trying to argue about it. Forever. And the part that changed my mind was the fact that the people that wanted to shit on that guy's legacy and what that guy did didn't stop arguing for it. And they kept arguing that he fucking lost and he didn't. By any objective measurement of winning, they didn't lose. They they killed more enemies than they, they managed to kill. Mm -hmm. They forced the enemy to sign a peace treaty that was not beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no metric that you can point to on a person to person basis where you'd be like, yeah, no, you fucking lost. That does it doesn't exist. Afghanistan. No, I no. <laughs> You're talking about a different war, and I still disagree. <laughs> the cut in the middle. Um, I think there's a lot to actually come out of that. There's a lot to unpack with that. And honestly, I really liked this video. I thought this was really good. And I it, to see some that back and forth, that banter, I I, I love it. It it's so so good to, for me to see that in my opinion i absolutely love it it's next level to me and if you haven't checked out the subscribe podcast you should definitely do so absolutely and i think that going off of what he said going off that one man and, and fat electrician saying that they were just absolutely shitting on his legacy and that they were still arguing is someone can argue he's right right there are no there's no winners when it comes to war right and the people that want to argue it were the ones that didn't serve, right? Or the ones that it, it, they, they're inc inconsequential to the problem, right? But the issue is we're still going to have Twitter randoms. We're still going to have people that, you know, are going to insert their own, well, no, this is this and you're just wrong. And it's, you know, you can be as passive, non-aggressive, just I don't want to engage with this, you know, but there will still be that rhetoric against you. How do you defend against that? How do you defend against defamation? How do you defend against slander? How do you, def you know, defend having your absolute just 
your career just absolutely shredded by other people. You can argue that they're inconsequential and a very strong man, you know, I would argue would just not even pay attention to them. Uh, <laughs> it's it's just wrong to me, in my opinion, to be able to trash somebody like that. And even then, like fat electrician serving facts, and I you know, I I get what he's doing. I, I understand why he's you know following this philosophy. It it's just very interesting to see the lengths that people will go in order to just really I can't even say bully other people or I guess bully I guess harass maybe is the correct word but uh no this is definitely a very sensitive subject and especially when it comes to Vietnam vets the way I've always understood it is that uh people treated them like crap people treated them like garbage um American public didn't want to be in that war and it has led to very interesting effects but uh, I really enjoyed this I definitely recommend you check out the uh unstrapped podcast thank you all for watching I'll see you all in the next one